Now, while you remain standing this morning, I just want to remind you that we gather to praise God and express thanksgiving for his love and provision here today. And we are testifying when we do that to the truth of how much he truly, truly loves us. And that promotes spiritual growth in our Thanksgiving is a wonderful time to connect to the truth of God's love for us. This morning, I would like to introduce you to the Thanksgiving chair. Uh-huh, yeah. Thanksgiving chair, and I would like to invite four people to join me. Um, I'm actually going to ask them to make their way around this way as I finish sharing a few things, and we will go in this order. Jerry, Don. Maria, and John, okay? God has revealed his love to us time and time again, yet we can easily forget God's goodness and minimize the fact that it is his provision in our lives. This morning, we're going to take a few minutes to celebrate his goodness by expressing gratitude. Scripture teaches God inhabits the praises of his people, and we are to come into his presence through thanksgiving. We are to give thanks to the Lord with our whole heart and recount his wonderful deeds. I'd like to invite Jerry to come on up. <laughs> Hi, sweet girl. I want you to have a seat. You got to sit in the Thanksgiving chair. Amen. You feeling it? <laughs> you thankful for truth? Mm -hmm. Can you handle truth? Tell us about some love that God's been pouring on your life lately, Miss Jerry. And you're going to have to put this up so we can hear. So this Thanksgiving, I'm thankful to have my sister-in-law, Linda, she keeps me out of trouble. She tries. <laughs> well, we work together too, so we're, we're really mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, I'm, and I'm very, very thankful to Pastor Mary. You have really helped me in the past couple of years been an honor but you need to know that's God's love for you in Christ Jesus and he just simply uses each of us as vessels in a moment right well I'm still mourning my sisters and brothers I just every Sunday when you talk I tear up I really tear up and I'm always 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 thinking about them it's okay you're going to see him again someday, right? That was, my, that was my last line. Someday we'll all be together. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. <laughs> now, Linda and I oh, there. go to the cemetery where my brother is. And we sit there and talk to him and talk to him and talk to him. Yeah. It helps. There you go. And Sunday, every Sunday helps. I still go home crying. Well, I hope that it's getting filled with joy. Pastor Mary, <laughs> thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Love you. You can go this way. Don. I'm hum Did you hear the hum? It's kind of a hum, a hum. Have a seat, my friend. In the Thanksgiving chair. God, and you're thankful, and God is doing awesome things in your life, and you can handle that. I'm also um, thankful for 55 years of marriage to my high school sweetheart, and that's, that's a blessing every night when we go to bed. Here we are, still together. <laughs> well, there have been good times and sad times, but we are together. And... Um, also, I'm thankful for Dr. R.C. Sproul, who illuminated the scriptures to me, taught me facts and ideas and understandings of the scriptures. 
And last, I'm thankful for Pastor Mary, who through her life lessons taught me how to live those things, <laughs> which is what knowing Jesus Christ is about, is living. Thank you, Mary. is Maria. I have a seat in the Thanksgiving chair. Can you handle some truth? You going to share some with us? All right. I don't think you can scare me, Maria. So I asked God last night, I said, before I went to bed, God, guide me over what I should say to you guys today, that I really wanted to share his words to you today. And so, in a deep sleep, of course, 12.30, last night, I'm awakened, and I'm being told. I had nothing written down, nothing written down. I was coming up here with nothing. So I went downstairs, and of course, I brought my Bible, my New King James Version, and I opened it up, and I said, I know you have something to say. And when I opened it up, it went to Ezekiel. 30. Oh, sorry, hold on a second. And now I have the same with this father. He is to be respected. He is to be loved and cherished. And being Christian now, I see love and I see it through all of you and the hugs and the love that you give me. It's beautiful. It's something that I've never seen. So God bless. Thank you. <laughs> this is John. Good morning, my friend. I know. Where were you when I needed that hug earlier? I Have remember a seat this in chair. The, the last chair. time I sat in this chair, I was 80 years old, <laughs> and I had a gray hair. Look at the miracle. See, I'm thankful. <laughs> Can you handle truth? I certainly can. So share some. I shall. Um, on August 14th, I made a poor decision on uh, having a few drinks and driving. And during that time, I was so tired, uh, and it was only a short drive, thinking that what could happen of this, right? And so I, I had to pull over into a gas station because it rained, and I fell asleep in a gas station. And I was woken by a on the window and it was the police saying, are you okay? We had signs that there was someone dead in the car. <laughs> and I opened the window and said, I'm not dead. Well, with that, the, the policeman smelled alcohol and said, were you drinking today? Well, that's a much longer story than three minutes will provide me to share with you. So I am so thankful today to sit before you to tell you I've learned a lesson and I don't have to beg a mother and father for taking their loved one's life. And I don't have to beg uh, anybody to please forgive me. Um, I am very fortunate. I don't consider myself lucky. I am blessed. And so I am very, very thankful to share this Thanksgiving this way instead of another way it could have been. I understand. Praise God. We're so proud of you. You're going to have victory. You're going to have victory. <clears throat> but let's, I need some prayer myself, so let's just pause here for just a minute and, and seek God. Heavenly Father, your word teaches that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And I thank you for the testimony of those that have been shared today. It's truth, God. It's truth. It's how you are working in their lives. And we just thank you that you make a way for us to understand and, and to truly uh, uh, comprehend the revelation of truth as it's happening within us. We know, God, that you have a desire for every one of your children to walk in truth, and that requires relationship. Truth is a person. It's Jesus Christ. And we thank you for truth operating in our lives. We pray for the anointing of this word today. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Been lots going on this past week, hmm? 
Yep, lots and lots and lots. I was thinking about a couple of quotes that I heard just yesterday that were written by George Orwell. Anyone familiar with any? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Novelist, English novelist and journalist. He actually, George Orwell was his pen name and his real name was Eric Arthur Blair. There were several quotes that resonated truth to me. I want to share them, to just deposit them in you, to be thinking about them with regard to where we find ourselves and then to be thanking God for where he's taking us. The most effective way to destroy people, he says, is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. Let that soak in. The further a society drifts from truth, the more it hates those who speak it. Here's another one. If liberty means anything at all, it means the right to tell people what they do not want to hear. And the last one. In a time of deceit, telling the truth is actually a revolutionary act. Last week we explored Jesus' word about protecting ourselves from being deceived and misled by evil in the last days. And certainly Christ knew we were vulnerable to misunderstanding the truth of his kingdom. Today is actually celebrated Christ the King Sunday. And in our lectionary scripture passage from the Gospel of John, we see an encounter between Jesus and Pilate. Now we know this reading best that we read it during Holy Week, but I'm going to just share just a little snippet, enough to wet your whistle, and I'm going to ask for you to read it further and consider it as you leave today. Pilate, he called for Jesus to be brought to him. And he said and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, Is this your own question, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate? retorted. Your own people and their leading priests brought you to me for trial. Why? What have you done? For some reason, Pilate gets the idea that it's Jesus that's on trial, but I'm thinking it's something very different. You decide what you think. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. If it were, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish leaders, but my kingdom is not of this world. Pilate said, so you're a king? Jesus responded, you say that I am a king. Actually, I was born and I came into the world to testify to the truth. All who love the truth recognize that what I say is true. And Pilate asks, what is truth? What is truth? It's time for Pastor Mary to sit in the chair. I would not know truth without Jesus. Because of Jesus, I know in my heart that God loves me. I can never do anything that separates me from that love. I'd like to tell you that every aspect of my life has aligned with the will of God, but it has not. I will also tell you that the best parts of my life have been lived out of my relationship with Jesus. See, God is a relational God, and he has all about that family feel. And when you and I get a chance to really connect to Christ, we know that, and no one can rob it from us. John knows he's loved. 
Maria knows she's loved. Don knows he's loved. Jerry knows she's loved. Not because everything has been so easy, because certainly you live in human bodies, you're going to face stuff. Somebody say stuff. But Jesus says, I may not spare you all of the hard places, but I make a promise to you that I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. And it is truth that I know in my heart that God is with me, he has always been with me, and he always will be with me. And that's the truth I hold on to. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your eternal goodness and kindness to us. We thank you that you teach us that truth is we need Jesus, and we declare today that he is our Savior, our Lord, and our King. We would not think of living this life apart from a relationship with you, Lord, because we'd never know the direction for our life. You say that as we connect to you and we trust you and we stop leaning on our own understanding, that you will guide our paths. And in spite of everything that's going on in this world, Lord, we're going to give you ourselves, we're going to submit to you, we're going to resist evil, and we're going to make the journey for your glory. We thank you for the power of your spirit who makes it all come to pass. And we're going to allow you to now hear our thanksgiving and our praise because every blessing comes from you and blessings sometimes come in the form that brings tears. So we just thank you for all you do to help us as your family grow up. Blessed be your name, God. Blessed be your name. Do in each of our lives what only you can do. Form and fashion our hearts into pliable, loving vessels to which you can dwell. And then help us to cooperate with the work of your spirit to reach out and love others around us. Because you desire, Lord, that not one should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, <clears throat> this is Thanksgiving week, and I want you to make your purpose in Christ Jesus to build relationship. Will you do that? Work at it. Listen to people. Invite some new people into your realm of influence. Reach out to share the love of God, because I'll tell you what, you will find such blessing there because God inhabits that kind of behavior. And this is all about thanksgiving. So let that thanksgiving flow out of you and into the people around you. And enjoy. And you will enjoy blessings. God bless you.